Hi, I'm Doris Epstein, and welcome to Mensch Life TV. Today, we have an opportunity to meet an extraordinary man who heads an extraordinary organization. The man is Reverend Dr. John Tweedy. The organization is Christians for Israel, and he's with us right now. Welcome, John. Thank you, Doris. A pleasure to be with you. You have more than enough being the pastor of a huge church in Brantford, Ontario, the New Covenant Christian Fellowship. That would be more than enough for anybody. And yet you had this international organization with branches all over the world. We'll be hearing more about it. Mm. What drives you to take this on yourself? You can call it passion for truth, passion for the truth about the people of Israel, and uh, a calling from the Almighty God to do this. And it's uh, looking back over 30 years of ministry. I know that I got, was called to the Christian ministry, but now that I look back, I realize I got a second call, and that was to speak out passionately for the rights of the Jewish people when there are so many wrongs uh, perpetrated against them. And so that's where the passion comes from. You say you got a second call. Yeah. How did you experience this? A gradual awareness that uh, when I began to read the Bible, when I started to study formally for the ministry, university, and then seminary. You grew up in Ireland, right? I grew up in Ireland. I came to Canada at the age of 22 um, in a different profession altogether. My life was changed at the age of 27. I'll just say I was, um, had an encounter with the living God and realized I was called to become a pastor, a Christian minister. So I started to study formally at university followed by three years of seminary. But as I began to read the Bible seriously now, I began to realize that it's a very Jewish book, written mostly by Jewish people, about the Jewish nation. And I realized that God, through the Hebrew prophets, had made promises to Israel that were being fulfilled before my eyes in my lifetime. For example, the rebirth of Israel in 1948. Uh, which we can say is a miracle. And I've been going to Israel since 1980. Uh, don't ask me how many times I've been yeah, there. Yeah, we'll talk about that. That's extraordinary. I just came back, tours. but I've watched the development of this nation, uh, fighting for survival, uh, successive wars, yet progressing and blessing the world with innovation. Um, and so many things that the Jewish people have contributed in medicine and surgical techniques. Yet yeah, you've called, in, your, in, in a talk that you gave publicly, you've called Israel the most controversial country in the world. Uh, but blessed by God. <laughs> controversial because uh, it, it exists in a neighborhood where the neighbors don't want Israel there and are doing what they can to remove Israel from there. But Israel survives and thrives in the toughest neighborhood on planet Earth. Amazing story. An amazing discovery for yes. you. Ama amazing, yeah. Because I've watched, I've watched Israel uh, grow up. Did you, were develop. you involved with Jewish people? Did someone trigger you? This came Absolutely. out of your own reading. It, it came out of my reading, but I want to speak about it as a revelation, which is to say it originates with God. God gave me an understanding about the Jewish people um, that became a passion which has developed and the understanding has increased with time and experience but it definitely um, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing unless some um, divine force called me into it as you say I have more than enough on my plate as a pastor uh, but it's it's just a passion that drives me and 30 years later it's uh, stronger than ever Put it that way. You're not burnt out? Uh, absolutely not. I've just come back from Israel where I had a 38 Canadians, and believe this, 48 Ugandans because I've been going to Africa to teach about Israel as well and now we have Africans going to Israel and developing a passion for Israel. I had three members of the Ugandan parliament in this group, one of whom was a cabinet minister uh, and who came back changed by his experience in Israel. So it's... It's, it just keeps growing. Okay, uh, let's back up. Christians for Israel. Yes. Tell us about the organization. It started in Holland, um, I'm going to say 79, 1980, by a Dutch businessman who had grown up uh, in his family watching his parents. Uh, he's in his 80s now, but certainly th lived through the Second World War, but watched his parents morning and evening pray for the Jewish people. And that gave him a passion. And as a businessman, he was not content to just run a business. 
In fact, he began to import chemicals from Israel to help the, uh, the Israeli economy, particularly in the 1970s when there were the first talks of boycotting Israel and Israeli products. Well, he swam against the stream and wanted to work with Israel. So he developed this branch in Holland, which, by the way, before the Second World War, there, there were an estimated 130,000 Jewish people living in, in Holland. By the end of it, there were about 19,000. So more than 120,000 Jewish people, Dutch citizens, were taken away and never came back, among them and Frank's family. Well, there was in, in, the, in the Dutch consciousness, uh, how could this have happened? And perhaps, how could we have allowed it to happen? So he began to speak out for Israel, and uh, it, the, the organization grew. Then it grew beyond Holland and grew into the nations, and today over 22 nations and developing, certainly in Africa. And two years ago in Uganda, I opened Christians for Israel office in Uganda, right beside the parliament building. In fact, people see the sign, and they think it's the... Israeli embassy <laughs> in Uganda, which unofficially in a has way it is because the Israeli ambassador, um, I think, to Kenya was there recently speaking, and so yes, it is unofficially the Canadian okay. Thing. We'll be back in just a minute and more about Christians for Israel. <music> Reverend Dr. John Tweedy, Christians for Israel not just an organization, not just talking, you are in the film production business as well. Yeah, we speak of ourselves as a movement, which means um, we're fighting anti-Semitism, we're raising awareness around the world of Israel's rightful place to be where she is, according to God's will, who put Israel in the land of Israel in the first place. But I'm a serving pastor, which means I have to be with my congregation pretty much most Sundays, certainly the majority of Sundays in the year, so that limits what I can do in terms of travel. So we began to do, uh, we put our teachings on DVD. And the series was called Why Israel? Eight lectures, Bible study sessions, uh, so that the message could go across Canada, basically. Now, believe it or not, it's translated into Russian. <laughs> it's going into the Russian churches. So this is, these are miracles. Of okay, God. let's see something that you've done. The first one you've done is... Journey Through Time. Actually, the second, Why Israel was the first. Oh. And then we did a documentary series, Israel, A Journey Through Time. Which is about what, before Which we is 4,000 years of the history of Israel. All right, Max, can we see it? When was this completed? When, when did you do this? Um, 2008. 2008. Israel is a miracle. Israel is a prophecy coming true. Anyone who saw a Jew had the obligation to kill him. We're living in perhaps the most exciting time in the history of the world because all roads today lead here to Jerusalem. Anti-Semitism certainly had a base in the Greek tradition. Well, and the Palestinians were the Jews who lived here. Hitler has gone, but a new Hitler appeared. But if you look, who really wants to dominate the world? Who teaches to dominate the world? There's only one religion which does that, and that is the apocalyptic jihadic Islam. In 1936, uh, the suicide bombers walked into the shop. 
and blast himself. We have an unfortunate situation that uh, people are looking for an easy out. Israel, a journey through time, past, present, and prophetic. It's as if God, every day, takes out his paintbrush and he paints a new scene of beauty. Prophecy fulfilled in the wilderness of Judea. Powerful. How long is it? It's uh, six units made for television for four and a half hours of television. It began airing in uh, four years ago in July and is on weekly all over the world. It's been seen by millions upon millions of people across the continents. And it's changing their lives and their view of Israel. The view of Israel, the controversial view of Israel, especially with this famous German author, Gunther Grass, coming out mm -hmm. with such primitive statements about mm -hmm. Israel, old anti-Semitic canards. Yeah. And yet you not only write and talk and make films about Israel, but you take people there, and you've been there at the worst of times, during the Intifada. Uh, yes, in fact, uh, from Canada, leaders of our organization joined with the leaders of the B'nai B'rith. We went together at the height of the Intifada in uh, 2002, and uh, in solidarity, yes, and taking groups there regularly. Uh, in good times and challenging times, we continue to go. I've just come back, I was there a month ago, we have a tour going next week, led by a colleague of mine, and uh, God willing, in October, I'll be going back with another group. What do you, what do you focus on when you go? What, what, what sort of things do you want the people to see and absorb? Well, of course, when they go for the first time in particular, they want to they live the Bible, if you like. So we take them to the places that they've read about in the Bible, but we're very interested in prophecy, what God has promised, and how his promises have been fulfilled. So we want them to experience Israel uh, as a living entity, a nation under God, to whom God made promises, and God is keeping his promises. So our goal is they're transformed by the experience. They go as tourists, perhaps even pilgrims, but they leave as ambassadors for Israel. And it works. It we, works. We watch them changing day by day. I mean, I have my Bible open where we go, and I tell them what happened in this location, uh, past, present, and then I tell them prophetically, the prophets, the Hebrew prophets have said, this is going to happen here. I can take them to the Mount of Olives, looking down at the holy city of Jerusalem, and tell them what the prophet Zechariah said about Messiah's coming, who will come to that very mountain. We'll be back in just a minute with more about Christians for Israel and Reverend Dr. John Tweedy. <laughs> Dr. John Tweedy, Christians for Israel. The world is making life very difficult for Israel. Unsuspected people are coming out of the woodwork in ignorant and, and, and even mythical, old stereotypical condemnation. Then there's Hezbollah and Hamas and the looming threat of Iran. How do you support Israel at a time like that? And what is your thinking about direction vis-a-vis -vis Iran? Uh, one of the things we do is we have a, a publication called Israel and Christians Today. Yes, uh, it's right here. It's an it. excellent newspaper. That's, um, that's the Canadian version of the international edition. And you can see the front page has the concept of war, which really highlights where we are today. Israel is under grave threat 
by Iran, um, whose president Ahmadinejad has threatened to wipe Israel off the map. Do you think but he it's means not just it? Iran. Is it bluff? Um, no, I don't think they're bluffing. Um, I think they, they mean it. And if, if, if it wasn't Iran, there are enough other enemies of Israel. And the rise of anti-Semitism, it's like the 1930s, it seems, all over again. And I can understand how Jewish people would be concerned about the times that we're living in. There's so much uh, propaganda and uh, unjust accusations made against Israel. What people forget is the contribution Israel has made to the world. If we were to think of the number of Nobel Prizes won by Jewish authors, writers, researchers, uh, compared to any other race on earth, it's amazing. But that's a fulfillment of something God said to Abram, Abraham in Genesis 12, verse uh, 3, that I will make of you a great nation, and the nation that comes from you will be a blessing to all nations. People have forgotten what the Jewish people have given the world. Our job as Christians for Israel is to remind them and tell them um, our new DVD series, Israel, A Journey of Light, tells the story of how Israel in so many spheres of human existence has and is blessing the world. If we only talk about the irrigation drip system developed in Israel, it's blessing farmers in Africa and India where there's a shortage of, of rain. Um, so the threat of Iran, I believe, is real, and Israel needs to take it seriously. Um, imagine living in Israel today with the threat of, of nuclear weapons. Now, what's going to happen? I, would, I can tell you this. God has promised, in fact, he has guaranteed Israel's survival. So I don't look to the nations, the United Nations, to come up with some formula that uh, protects Israel going forward. My hope is in the Almighty God and the promises he made to the prophets. The psalmist in Psalm 121 verse 4 said, He who watches over Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. So my confidence, my faith is in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the promises he made to be the preserver of Israel, the guarantor of Israel's survival uh, and future. And no matter what the politicians say, um, God will take care of his people, Israel. You have such complete faith. I have, because I've seen the promises come true uh, that, the, that the prophets have said, uh, the rebirth of Israel in 1948. Uh, after nearly 2,000 years of exile among the nations, God said, I will bring them back. I will, in fact, in Jeremiah uh, chapter 32, God says, I will plant them in their own land with all my heart and all my soul. So God, the Almighty God, reveals there in that verse His heart. I will plant them in their own land with all my heart and all my soul. And there are other prophecies that say they will never again be uprooted. So my confidence is in God and the promises He made through the Hebrew prophets. How do you feel our government is acting? Wonderful. I'm so pleased to see the Canadian government stand up for what is right, and not being afraid to speak it out. I think Prime Minister Harper on more than one occasion has spoken forcefully about Israel's right to exist as a nation where she is in the Middle East. And so we can, as Canadians, we can feel very good. Um, Canada has not chosen neutrality. It's chosen to stand on the side of righteousness and what is right concerning Israel. So we, as Canadians, can feel good about our Prime Minister's position. How do you feel about President Obama? Uh, wavering. Uh, I'm not really sure where he is. I, I think he does too much fence-sitting, um, and he needs to come out, like our Canadian Prime Minister, and speak up for what is right. He's wavered too much. I, I, my own opinion is he's, he's encouraged not just the enemies of Israel, but the enemies of democracy uh, to be uh, more bold in their attempts to undermine our Western civilization. You think civilization. they see this as appeasement, as weakness? Well, apologies. He may be well-intentioned uh, when he started out to try to take a different tack with the, uh, the Muslim world, but it's not working. All over the world, it's not just Jewish people now that are, uh, that are being persecuted. Christians are being ethnically cleansed out of the, the nations where Muslims uh, dominate. In Nigeria, in, um, in Iraq, in Syria, there I. Before long, there are not going to be any Christians living in these nations. And even in, in England, in Britain, um, Muslims are protesting on the streets of, of England and calling for Sharia law over and against the law of, of the British uh, Commonwealth. So we are in very precarious times. 
Uh, there's no doubt about it. And I think as the leader of the Western world, President Obama uh, needs to be more forceful in his statements. You cannot, there's no, you can't be neutral in this, this uh, situation. You can't be neutral. You cannot be neutral. You can't sit on the fence. You need to take a position against the forces of evil that want to undermine our Western way of life. Iranians say that the best way to do that is to support the dissidents in Iran. Do you agree with that? Um, is that forceful enough? Well, we supported the dissidents in, uh, in Egypt, and now we're getting um, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, gaining more and more prominence uh, and potentially taking over the government of Egypt. So uh, who's, you know, dissidents can become the enemy uh, very quickly. So there's no sure, foolproof way of negotiation that you see right now? Is that I don't it? see negotiation working with people that are determined to wipe you off the map. Then what's your suggestion? Stand firm for what you believe and for what is right. And in fact, speaking of Israel, Israel is like the first domino. Uh, Israel is roadblocking all the attempts to uh, undermine Western civilization. So we need to support Israel as a domino that needs to remain standing. If very, Israel very important. Legal. The only democracy in the Middle East. We need to support that democracy John, firmly. Thank you. And I'd like to see you back. I'd be glad to come back. Great. This is Doris Epstein saying, don't forget to be a mensch. All over the world in April, Wherever there are Jewish communities, Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Remembrance Day, will be observed. But I doubt very much that anybody could beat what these people, my guests, are going to do for Yom HaShoah. A motorcycle ride called A Ride to Remember. We'll hear about it from Gila Yefet. And you're with Yidden on Wheels. Yidden on Wheels, yes. And Steve Stein, the Jewish Motorcyclists Alliance. Well, I'm with Hidden on Wheels as well, but I'm uh, uh, with our club, a founding member of the Jewish Motorcyclists Alliance. Which is what exactly? The Jewish Motorcyclists Alliance started off with five founding clubs in 2004, and subsequent to that we had our first Ride to Remember, which was to the Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington, D.C. And so, uh, after that, we uh, grew to the present uh, stature of 46 member clubs in about five countries. And we are having our first R2R in Canada, our eighth annual Right to Remember. R2R, Right, right to, to Remember. Right to Remember. Yes. Uh, first Right to Remember in Canada, in Toronto, in the Toronto area. This, uh, what are you exactly going to do? And yeah. when? Okay, well, it's, there's a number of uh, events. We are going to the Ride to Remember itself, is a ride to remember and honor the six million that were murdered in the Holocaust. And that will occur on June the 1st, and we will be riding throughout Toronto and uh, in, an, in a, a, an effort to uh, bring attention to the Holocaust. And we will also be raising funds to support Holocaust education where we're actually going to um, uh, support education for non-Jews, right? Exactly. Um, we are, we well, are raising funds. In this particular, our mandate, uh, this evolved about four or five years ago, was to raise fund, is to raise funds for Holocaust education. Some of our previous efforts have raised funds to either fund uh, a library, fund teaching aids as we did for uh, Whitwell in 2006. The paper uh, clip, if you... Yeah. Electronic uh, boards, uh, whiteboards. Um, in 2008, we uh, funded some courses at the university level on Holocaust education. This year, we're doing something different. We are funding a Holocaust educators tour under the auspices of the Newberger uh, UJA Federation of Greater Toronto. And the Holocaust educators tour takes about 40 non-Jewish teachers from across Canada to the site of where the Holocaust occurred. And they learn about the Holocaust in a visceral manner. Uh, there are uh, Holocaust survivors who will accompany them on the trip. And the idea is they come back to Canada with a visceral understanding of the Holocaust to teach their students. So we want to teach the teachers rather than the students for this right to remember. 
uh, for this fundraising that I'll we raise. Put our efforts, yes. Yeah, how so many on. people are involved, Kilo? In what? In the, actually, in the ride, the actual ride. In the ride, ride. how many? Oh, a lot. How many motorcycles? Maybe three, four hundred, four hundred. And how, how is this working with it? It sounds like an organizational strategy. We're working very strategy. hard. We're working very hard to bring this together. It's a lot of people. From, we're the hosting um, club. And, and who's coming? Well, we have. Uh, we've, He's got the list. We've opened this up to uh, everybody in the Jewish Motorcyclist Alliance and beyond. Because this is, uh, should be uh, noted that this, you do not have to be a member of the Jewish Motorcyclist Alliance. You're a, one becomes a member of the Jewish Motorcyclist Alliance by being a member of a club that is affiliated with the Jewish JMA, Jewish Motorcyclist Alliance. Right. But you needn't be a member. Anybody can come as long as, of course, uh, they are uh, in accord with our objectives. Is this what you're wearing? Usually we wear boots, though. <laughs> <laughs> I have boots We're missing on. a boots. You've got boots. And, I've got boots. and my helmet. Yeah, but yeah, basically. And, and David, see if you can catch this. You're wearing the logo for the ride. Uh, yeah. Can you we want, see it? I'm going, absolutely. I'm going to turn. One second. If I can stand up. R2R. R. Right. This is it. Yes, that is, this is it. Is everybody going and to this have is this? Actually, this is actually our, uh, our logo for Yids on Wheels. Uh-huh. Right. And this is the JMA logo. There you go. So JMA, our club, Yidden on Wheels, and the logo for the 2012. What about Art all Mark. these other? This is basically all the places we have been. You know, with all the, the motorcycle. Place. Yeah, with the motor. I can't even see. Where is this from? Chicago. This is Chicago. We were there last 2010. year. 2010. Okay, he knows better than me. I mean, it can go on and on. We've been any. I mean, we've been to Chicago, New York. I mean. Uh, Washington, uh, Savannah, Milwaukee, Milwaukee Omaha, Omaha, Lincoln, Nebraska. That's right. I mean, they just, uh, it just on and on. And I got to tell you, it's 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 such a pride to do this. And I, for for what I do this, why you know I joined this motorcycle. I think it gives us pride as Jews that we're we're not perceived. As, 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 you know, the regular pictures are when somebody talks about the Jew. So when we're writing, I feel coming from a pride from Do strength. Do they take you for hell's angels? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> well, I come from a place of pride and strength. And this is the way, you know, I just got to tell you a story. When we went to New York and we, were, we joined the, the parade of Israel parade, and, and as we were riding on the sides, we saw Holocaust survivors with tears in their eyes and while you know we're riding the motorcycle we have you know Israeli flags you know flags and wrapped around us and it's such a pride you know for me it's just there's, there's no sight other than you know seeing Jewish motorcycle. We'll hear more about it in just a minute going from I can understand why they were weeping going from defenseless yes. passivity to seeing that symbol of, of yes. strength which is what a motorcycle represents. Yes, yes. it's hard Back for me to minute. express but yes. We're watching Jewish motorcyclists in action. What are we seeing here, Gila? We're, we're, that's what you're seeing. I mean, they're in action. This is actually in... Where are you going? We're, going? we're actually touring Nova Scotia. This is, uh, uh, you know, part of our group. And, uh, yeah, this is what we do. But who Freedom are you? Freedom on the road. Are you professional <laughs> motorcyclists? What do you do? What do you do in your life? <laughs> well, we, uh, we are... Uh, I don't know if there's such a we're thing mothers, as a professional. We're mothers, we're fathers, we're professional. Yeah. We're just ordinary people, except we're all... Jews who like to ride motorcycles and our group Yidden on Wheels or Yao uh, is the as far as we know the oldest Jewish motorcycle club in the world we started back in 19 uh, I think it was 1995 or 1997 we were chartered in 1997 we have an official charter yeah. and we celebrated our bar mitzvah about two years ago and as far as we know we lighted the candle too <laughs> we lighted a candle as well <laughs> So we've been around for a long time, and uh, about uh, sometime in around 1998, we met other Jewish motorcyclists at a big motorcycle rally that's held every year in uh, New York State and Lake George called Americade. That was even before I started riding the bike, because I'm rather new to r riding. I've only been riding since the year 2000. And Gila, what about you? When did you start? 
I actually, I actually usually don't actually ride because I'm a big chicken, but I do have my license and I got it about four and a half years ago. But I usually ride behind my husband. Do women ride? Absolutely. Drive? The Absolutely ride, yes. You should be very proud Jewish women riders, yes. There it's are. a growing uh, segment. It's yeah. the fastest growing segment in motorcycling generally. And look at those motorcycles. I know. Some of them are huge. See, there they are. I mean, yeah. you need strength for that. Yeah, there we are. See, we're saying Birkat HaDerech. Tefillat HaDerech. Yeah. Before you start, you say like, a prayer yes. for the road. Yes. Tefillat HaDerech. Yes. So we'll be safe and uh, so forth and so forth. What else do you do that's different from Hell's Angels? Well, we do a lot of a lot of different things from Hell's Angels. We basically uh, we ride to have fun. We ride. Uh, we're a riding club. We do. Uh, we we like to ride, and we go on lo a lot of long trips, uh, either as a club or as individuals uh, within the club. Um, and we raise funds. Our official club charity is the One Family Fund, and we raise funds for uh, them for every victims year. of terror in yes. Israel. Yes. yes, that's our official club, uh, yes. and, and we, all, we donate every year to the designated char charitable recipient for the right to remember. But, you know, the first time I saw Yidden on Wheels, I was knocked out. It was the attempted boycott of Israeli wines oh, and liquor I was there. Store. I was there singing and dancing. Yes. And people were, were, were protesting, people were buying wine like yeah. crazy. Yeah. All of a sudden, I see <laughs> motorcycles roaring up yes. with a little degel, a little flag, yeah. and David. Yeah. And I was wrapped in my flag. That was I you? Mean. Yeah, it was me. This is the fun part of it in see, a look, way. Look, look, look at what we do. You have to see. This is You're what dancing. we do. <laughs> we dance the hora wherever we are. <laughs> yeah, sorry. What were you going to say? I was going to say that um, when the uh, boycott of, uh, uh, and unfortunately a lot of our own people are, were involved in this uh, endeavor to boycott Israeli wines on the eve of Pesach, um, I, I uh, actually decided that it made sense that we come out there. And I asked our club to come out to that event and show our number, and our club responded as they always do. And we had about 30 bikes. And 30 bikes may not sound like a large number, but when you see 30 bikes in a Coming row, it, was, a lot. it, it looks did, like it could be 300. It did look like that. And the other thing that's very interesting, um, most people who are not motorcyclists, and that is indeed most people, when they see a bunch of bikers coming, they don't know what to expect. They don't know who we are. There's a stereotype. Bikers, uh, bad, right. hell's angels. So when they saw us, and wherever we appeared, they said, they think, oh, oh, who are these guys? And the uh, pro-Palestinian, uh, uh, the We've boycotters, been, yes. they disappeared within seconds. Yeah. And we subsequently parked our bikes, went into the store, and I think about well, 20 minutes afterwards. It was about gone. There was no more wine. Sold out. <laughs> Anything Israeli in the store was gone. So this is what our club does also whenever they need us anywhere, we're always there. Gila, you come from a country that has given us strength. You're born in Israel. Yes, I am. How old were you when you came here? I was 12. But it still is embedded in you. That oh, strength. you can never take the Israeli out right. of the Israeli. Absolutely. Absolutely. I also grew up in an Israeli home. So when you talk about being on the motorcycle, gives you a feeling of pride, a feeling mm -hmm. of strength. Well, because even though I was born in Israel, you know, whether it's friends or family that come from the Holocaust, I know what happened. Was your family in the Holocaust? Some of them, yeah. Let's talk about that when we come back okay. in just a minute. Yidden on wheels. Oh, yes. Are you ever? Look at what's going on. You're having yes. so much fun. Yeah, we ride, But you we eat. also yeah. are riding with a purpose. Yes. And, Steve, you say that this ride to remember is different from all other rides to remember. Yes, it is. Uh, we typically, or in s previous ride to remembers, are uh, the highlight of the event. It's a three-day event. The highlight is the actual ride to remember, which is on a Friday, and that's followed by a Shabbat dinner or banquet. And we have speakers 
uh, at the Shabbat banquet. In a couple of art wars, we've had a Holocaust survivor who talked about the horrors of the Holocaust, how they uh, uh, lived through it, how they escaped, and so on and so forth. Um, I decided that if our group, that is Yidden on Wheels, was to host the and organize the 2012 R2R, that we'd have something a wee bit different, or not a wee bit different, but a lot different, because I, was, I firmly believe that in our uh, event, we don't need to talk about the Holocaust because we know about the Holocaust. And the mantra, if you will, of our 2012 Right to Remember is that the very best way we can honor and memorialize the six million that were murdered is to do whatever we can in our own way to make sure it never happens again. Yes. So the mantra of this ride is never again. As a consequence, we will not have a Holocaust speaker to tell us what we already know. Right. We are going to have two speakers who are going to tell us and talk to us and, te and hopefully teach many of our attendees, many of whom are from the United States, uh, uh, who I would categorize as being from the liberal segment of our people about the serious danger that our community worldwide in the state of Israel presently faces. We are at a pivotal point in Jewish history. Unfortunately, the, uh, what is going on in the world uh, echoes very much what happened prior to the Holocaust. In the 30s. Yeah. I mean Absolutely. I agree with Steve. I think we're sleeping here. We are. The Jewish community is worldwide is sleeping. We have many people in our own community that are actively advocating against the legitima legitimacy of the state of Israel and the legitima legitimacy of the Jewish people and other people to support the state of Israel. We're, we're totally on the other side of that. We want to talk to people. We want people to understand that we are in a serious situation and there's things we should do about it and we uh, cannot remain, uh, remain asleep because there is a number of events worldwide that are trying to delegitimize the state of Israel and, and those people that support it. And we are there to counter so that. So in a way, so not in a way, you're using the Holocaust to make it relevant to what's going on Absolutely. today. Yes. And it is relevant yes. in your eyes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. We're not just a motorcycle. I mean, we're, we're, I think we're first Jews. And then we're, we're riders. And that's why it's important for us. We recognize that we are Jews first before anything yeah. because even if we don't want to recognize that history teaches us that the world regards us as Jews first That's right. so we have to respond to that and take that very seriously and accordingly therefore what we are doing in in this particular right to remember is to re remember the victims by trying to do something try and make the world aware not only to remember that's not enough. We have to advocate for the legitimacy of the state of Israel and the legitimacy of Ju the Jewish people and others, many and to others. Fight. And to fight. We have to, teach, we have to teach our own that how to prevent it to really mean never again. Never again will that happen to us. It should also be remembered, uh, or not remembered, but uh, should be brought, brought into uh, focus, that prior to the actual right to remember, on May 31st, oh, yes. we are going to be on Parliament Hill. We've actually reserved Parliament yes. Hill in Ottawa, and there will be approximately anywhere from 500 to 1,000 motorcyclists there That's going from to be Australia, the United States. We have evangelical motorcyclists Showing coming from us. Amarillo, Texas to yes. join us on Parliament Hill. We will, with our Christian friends, we will have a joint declaration on Parliament Hill on uh, at approximately 11 o'clock on May 31st, a joint proclamation of never again, and we will say Kaddish with Christian and Jewish clergy yes. for the six million that were murdered. There has never, there has never been anything like this never, in never. Ottawa, and we hope to see uh, possibly thousands of uh, 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 of members of the public from Montreal. So this is Toronto. going to be May 30th? May 31st. May 31st. What day is that, of the week is that? That's a Thursday. Thursday. A Thursday. What time? It'll start at approximately 10.30. Uh, People will start to assemble. In the morning. In yes. the morning. And, and On serve. Parliament Hill yes. in Ottawa. If you can come, and if, especially if you live there, 
Don't miss it. I think it's a historical there has occasion. Ne there has never, been, never been anything been like this. Yes. And led by motorcyclists. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jewish motorcycles. And there you are. Yes. We're, and we're traveling. So you're having the best. <laughs> we're, we're having the best time when we travel. You're having the best time, yeah. but you're also doing the best that you can do. We're doing for our community. Yeah. We're doing we for our community, and we're doing for the worldwide Jewish community. Yes. And I, you're involving non-Jews as well. That's well, absolutely. Extremely. We important. have a lot of friends, and we yes. want the world to know that there are a lot of friends, millions of friends on our side. Except are, it's, yeah. Sorry. it's the you know the. So this is an occasion to rally around a common and goal. They're, and they're 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 basically riding under our flag, which is never again. Yeah. Do you have a special? Is that the logo? Is that going to be the flag? That's going to be... Well, the, the, the official knows. logo of is this that? particular ride is, is what the we just saw before. The logo that we saw in Gila, R2R. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll have a JMA flag. In fact, at the hotel at the uh, Holiday Inn in uh, Markham, we will actually have a regular flagpole-type flag flying, JMA flag. Yes. And, and what about how are you going to be dressed and what's going to be on the motorcycle? Anything special? Well... Typical motorcycle gear, which is basically designed for uh, for safety reasons. Yeah. Because if you fall off, it hurts. Are you having hurts. flags at any point? We're always having our uh, flags. Yeah, I have a, my motorcycle. I typically have a Canadian and U.S. flag, but I'll have a JMA uh, a, um, a, a the logo, logo, flag? Uh, logo. Uh, flag, which we've had made up, and we will distribute to everybody who's registered for the ride. I would love to come. Good. Invite me. We come. Will. No, I don't need an invitation. And you don't need an invitation. You're coming. I'm coming. There you go. Hatzlacha, lots of luck. Thank you. And thank you, thank you very much, both of you, Thank for you coming very on much, Doris, for inviting us. Thank you.